response. Now, if you're claiming benefits and you live in Herne Bay, Whitstable or Tunbridge Wells, you may soon have to travel much further to go to the job centre. The government has been looking again at where they're located. It says because more people are claiming their benefits online, some centres are underused and will close next March. Rosie Duffield is the Labour MP for Canterbury and says the plans are already upsetting many of her constituents. It's a £7 return bus fare from Whitstable to Canterbury and lots of those people are kind of elderly or in a position where they can't necessarily afford that fare. Obviously they wouldn't be going to the job centre if they were comfortably off. I think it's all of those things. If you miss an appointment or you miss an interview, you're stuck on a bus or the bus is late, then you're terrified about getting um, sanctions imposed. Also, the universal credit rollout, people are really, really worried about missing that bit of advice, not knowing where to go. It's all a horrible, confusing time at the moment. The added stress and pressure on someone already receiving benefits. It's a bit cruel, I think. Well, joining us now from Whitstable is Sue Bott, who's the Deputy Chief Executive of Disability Rights UK. Thank you very much for joining us. Maybe you could explain what these closures may mean for people who claim benefits in Whitstable. Well, I think it will mean that uh, people have to travel a lot further. Um, but let's remember that that's not always easy for people. There's the, the affordability problem, um, but also for disabled people, there's the access problem. Uh, I have to say that uh, the, the buses uh, to and from Canterbury are not the most um, uh, ac accessible uh, going and, and could cause a lot of disabled people, especially, I think, great difficulties. But the government's saying, isn't it, that it will offer tailored support for the most vulnerable affected by these closures. It says group sessions, work coaches and increased flexibility. It does seem to be responding to those concerns. Yeah, but the trouble is that to be able to access those concerns, you've got to go to your job centre, haven't you? Um, so I'm, I'm not reassured by that statement uh, in, in any way whatsoever. And I think what we've heard from uh, our members at Disability Rights UK uh, time and time again is that there are all these pronouncements, but actually when it comes to it, there isn't the protection there for disabled people. In fact, quite the reverse government seems to have it in for disabled people. So what, what exactly do you think the consequences will be for those people who find it difficult to travel that bit further to their nearest job centre? Well, I think the consequences will, will be uh, that uh, uh, people will find it very difficult to claim the benefits that they're entitled to. Um, we've got the rollout of universal credit in this area from, from April next year. You have to apply online. Not everyone has access to a computer or can even use a, a, a computer. That's particularly prevalent amongst disabled people. Um, so how are they going to claim? Um, they need to go to their job centre for support, but they're going to have to go further uh, for support. And, and I just fear that, that many people are going to be left absolutely stranded and, and with nothing to support them. Sue so, Bott, thank you very much for joining us. Henry Smith, do you support these closures? Well, I think it's actually a reflection of the fact that we've got record high employment in this country now. Um, in my Crawley constituency, where the job centre happens to be remaining open, it's 1.5%. Uh, so um, I think this is a consequence of both a growing economy and more things being able to be done uh, remotely uh, on the web. And of course, it's important that we are delivering employment support uh, and job centre support to people in the most cost effective way, which is up to date but, with the way we transact. Yeah, and that's the government's argument for and justification for the closures. But as you've just heard, I mean, Sue Bott thinks you've, the government has got it in for disabled people. Rosie Duffield described it as a very cruel move because of those small number of very vulnerable people who will be adversely affected, they say. Well, one of the features uh, of um, the support for unemployed people, um, those sort of typically hard to reach people um, who may be long-term unemployed for all sorts of reasons, disability being one of them, is targeted support and support groups uh, to make sure that they are um, receiving um, the kind of help uh, that they need. So I think the answer is, is, to, is to really use resource more efficiently to target those most at need, uh, whereas I think for the vast majority of people, um, 
give the example of, of, of Monarch Airlines um, going out of business recently, uh, the job centre remotely contacted all of those uh, employees who were losing their jobs uh, with information on how EasyJet and Virgin Atlantic and other airline employers wanted to uh, employ them without ever having to visit a job centre in the first place. So I think I think the job centres are changing as the economy grows. And you're and confident changes. they can target those people who might be worst hit? By the I don't think we should ever be complacent um, and we need to ensure that resources are focused on those most vulnerable and most at need. Okay, Keith Taylor, if, if the government's right and 99% of people claiming universal credit are, made, are doing it online, it does make sense, doesn't it, to reduce your use of expensive buildings? Well, uh, in one way, yes, but if that expensive building is there for the um, elderly person or the disabled person uh, who's not near a, a working um, a job centre, then it's then it is actually. I don't know. You're saying credit. You're you're going to help them, but are you are you going to pay the, the bus fare? Well, the government is offering actually to, yeah, well, to help good. with travel costs, but uh, as and. and there's also been a lot of concern about, as, as Henry pointed out, about the about the unemployment rate. If the rate is is relatively low at the yeah. moment, then again, if but this if may you, be a good time it, to save money, much well, needed money, it, by doing. It's always this. a good time to save money, Natalie. But actually, what you need to do is make sure that you're spending the money wisely enough, reaching out to the most vulnerable, uh, and most disadvantaged members of the society. Um, you know, ever since we've had the austerity program, we've seen employment. Um, shrunk uh, more and more um, in, in terms of good jobs, long-term jobs. We've actually now got two million um, UK jobs on, on uh, zero-hours contracts. Mm. And these people up, are yeah. up, up against, you know, they're up against let's, the sharp Let's end. come back to the people who are on benefits. I mean, universal credit is being rolled out over the next few months. Henry, as you know, this is hugely controversial, even with, within your own party. Is this the right time to close job centres when people are so much in the dark about what it means for them? Well, universal credit is about rolling into one benefit, many different benefits, uh, so that it's much more uh, understandable. Also, it means that it tapers, so as people get back into work, they don't have this cliff edge of suddenly benefits But it's the uh, job ending. centres where people have to go to have that explained to them face to face. And if those job centres are closing at this critical time in the benefit system, surely, surely a delay would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Well, as we were discussing earlier on, uh, around about 99% of people do deal online. Uh, with uh, job centres now uh, and uh, for those who are most vulnerable there is support uh, again as we were discussing in terms of uh, support for their transport to get to a job centre if they need to go to a physical what, location. What about the wider narrative? I mean this feeds into an increasing feeling among many people that all the things Theresa May said when she took office a year ago about helping the most vulnerable in society just isn't materialising and, and as, we, as, as, as we just said having it in for disabled people. Rosie Lu Louise Casey has been a government advisor for 20 years under Labour and the Conservatives said the current benefit system is punitive. This is this is feeding into a to a to a sense that you don't care. Your government doesn't care. Well, I think the best way uh, to care about people is to ensure that there is employment for the, the, the largest number of people, and we have the highest employment level uh, since uh, recorded uh, history in this country. Now, the way to get people out of po poverty, the way to get people out of dependency, is to grow the economy and create jobs. Jobs. Um, and there that are, way, we're talking about the people well, who are and, and, the and, hardest and, to find work and, and, for and, obvious reasons. And that and way, vulnerable. you can then focus more resource on precisely those people who are most vulnerable uh, and need that extra help. So, is that why the government doesn't um, fund any f uh, food banks? Um, I, I don't see this consistency in your argument. If the conclusion that I and many other have reached uh, is that the Conservatives don't really care very much about the poor and vulnerable. OK, we're going to move on because it's time for some of the other news you may have missed this week in 60 Seconds with Lawrence Slater.